Hello, hello YouTube, it is your boy GZTV back with another video and we are here to talk about Ozark Season 4, Episode 9. I'm getting really close to ending the show off, uh, which is awesome. So, we're going to talk about mankind's problems here. You know, I'm going to make a big chunk. I'm not gonna, I don't really edit these videos that much. Obviously, you guys saw like the Wimben Yama video. Every single week, like every Friday, you can look forward to videos for that because for the next, next three weeks, I have videos planned for shit like this. So, yeah. For Ozark, we're just going to kind of have a big-ass discussion. That's how it goes. I'm taking it one catastrophe, catastrophe sorry, at a time. I'm a little tired, so bear with me. And now we're at the fallout from the last two episodes. Javi chose to murder Darlene Wyatt. Ruth chose to murder Javi. And now Wendy and Marty Bird are scrambling to figure out how they can rebuild the bridges. Like, get them out of the Ozarks and back to Chicago. They're trying to fucking retreat. Like, get me the hell out of here. The heat is becoming a little too much for us, you know? Um, the most interesting thing about this transitional chapter is where it ends. Setting up Marty and Ruth is essentially warring drug operation leaders. It's fucking insane. I, like, it's really gonna go down. There's gonna be a fat-ass drug war. Um, and you know how, like, the Lug Los Lagunas and the Navarro cartel were fighting. Like, it could be like that, but in fucking America. It's, it's, it's wild. Well, I guess, you know, two countries fighting each other. The drug business just got, just replaces its doom soldiers, or down soldiers, sorry, and Marty goes to Mexico to become the new hobby, while Ruth looks like she might become the new Darlene. New bosses, same as the old bosses. The death of Javi severs all ties for Marty and Wendy Bird because it kills both the Shaw deal and any connection to the FBI. The presumption would be that the Mexican leadership of the cartel would replace Javi, but with whom? Would it be someone who works with the Birds and Claire Shaw, or just someone who kills them all? Wendy starts the episode with a stiff drink. I mean, who can blame her? So much has fucking happened. They're damn near on their deathbeds at this point because of all of the mistakes that have been made, all the things that the birds have allowed to happen to make other people happy, and yeah. There's a fantastic exchange between Bateman and Lenny discussing the deep hole life has thrown them into. It's a conversation that highlights the difference between the two. Marty seems genuinely sad while Wendy tends to righteous anger. Um, he says, I didn't know she was going to kill him. She replies, then you're a fucking idiot. Wendy doesn't have the same sympathy as Marty for anyone, much less Ruth, accusing Marty of dining on excuses to feel like shit. He believes they destroyed Ruth's life, and it's an interesting thing to consider. Wendy then goes into some absolute nonsense about Marty being a good salesman regarding how they got into this situation. Go rewatch season one. She was with this plan from day one and has often been the one to turn down witness protection and other ways to get out. She's like, no, I don't want to get out. I want to build this empire. Like, we finally have the opportunity as a family to be powerful as shit. And I'm not going to let anything fucking ruin that, you know? Um, so, yeah. Uh, even here, she refuses to let go of the Shaw, Shaw deal until she knows it's dead. Have some fucking faith, she says, not realizing that she rarely has any in Marty either. So, like, you're kind of being a bit hypocritical here. Uh, yeah, Wendy's not giving up, which is kind of fucking irrational. It's going to get to a point where, like, okay, you have to fucking stop. Like, these people don't fuck with you. You killed someone that was in their dealings. Like, what are you doing? Or you had someone killed. Wendy, I'm not blaming Marty. Wendy's the one that made the fucking call. So after that excellent prologue, pick a god and pray gets back to the Ozarks. Ruth tells Three that it's over, she can finally sleep, she's got a slight weight off her shoulders, obviously Wyatt is still weighing down, because that's probably one of her favorite people in the whole entire world there, yeah. Meanwhile, Claire won't talk to Wendy, and P.I. Mel Saddam goes to meet with Helen's ex-husband, telling him that Helen worked for the drug cartel, and is probably dead. <clears throat> obviously really sad news, uh, the ex-husband had no fucking idea she was doing shit like this, so yeah, a lot of shit kind of dawning on him. Um, following Charlotte's, Charlotte's lead from the first half of the season, her daughter comes in and pleads with dad to let it go. Like, you have to fucking stop. These people are dangerous. We cannot really dive into this. Someone's going to get killed, you know. He cut to Charlotte confessing to Wendy that she told Ruth where to find Javi. How did they get out of this? Could they testify against Omar and go into witness protection? Wendy shuts that down immediately. Get Omar back to Mexico? How do they get him into power again? What would it take to get Omar back in control? Wendy needs to talk to him first. She's not taking witness protection. This is like laying down, and, and, and Wendy has too much pride to do shit like this. 
So as Javi's people start questioning Claire about his location, someone calls Mel to come back to the Ozarks. It turns out that Nathan Davis, played by the great Richard Thomas, is back. As if Wendy doesn't have enough problems. Wow, here comes her fucking father. Remember how Mel and Maya were going to team up at the end of the first season, half season? Well, now Nathan, searching for his missing son, Ben, can add some fuel to that fire. A lot of things stacking up against the birds. You know, you have the FBI not really fucking with them for not kind of like protecting Javi. Omar obviously wanting to kill kill someone because his nephew just died. Um, Mel Saddam, like who knows a little too much. Maya Miller knows a little too much. Uh, their father, the father of Wendy Dad or Nathan is going to know probably a little too much eventually. It's crazy to see, it's going to be crazy to see how their characters kind of deal with this whole, um, yeah. Speaking of missing kids, I mean, remember Zeke? The baby that has already lived in like four homes wasn't killed by Javi and is now apparently in Ruth's custody. What a twist that would be if the child was cut out of a woman's stomach in season one ends up raised by Ruth Langmore of all people. <clears throat> Marty takes a Hail Mary by going to Maya in the hope of rekindling the deal that she once offered. He could do 18 months and work for her as an informant. She thinks he's kidding. You're just another criminal to me now. Get out of my office. Another lifeboat off the sinking ship that is the Bird Empire has floated away. So now we have. So now Omar Navarro has a visitor. A character who seemed like he could be done is thrust back into the spotlight. It's Wendy, of course. She met with the FBI, Javi has disappeared, and Marty is sick of Wendy's shit. Like, disappointment after disappointment, she just keeps doing it. Um, she knows where Javi is, she knows who killed him. He's furious she's even talking to him, like, get the fuck away from me. My nephew just died, I'm trying to deal with this, like, fuck off, you know. He gets angry enough to rise and yell, I will kill you, Wendy, I will find a way. Is Wendy scared? Never, which... I don't know, I feel like she's kind of hiding some shit there, because we're talking about a damn cartel, this guy's connections, if you get him in any sort of contact with anybody, it's not going to end well. So, she actually makes a power move, though, calling the FBI to get Omar out of solitary, and make it clear that she did it. She wants Omar to know that she cares about him, and she wants to get him out of this thing. The idea is that she's the puppet master here, not him. So... Marty goes to Ruth to ask what to do with Wyatt's body. You know, do you want to cremate it? Do you want to bury it somewhere? After all, the birds own the only funeral home in town. Of course, Wyatt didn't have plans for his death. He was fucking 18 when he died. So they decided to put out a service for him. After a few transitional scenes, including an important one in which Marty confesses to going to see Maya, and Wendy does not respond with the same transparency regarding Omar, and one in which Mel shows Maya proof that Wendy rented a car... On the day that Ben disappeared, it's time for a funeral. They claim Wendy had to work. She didn't. And she meets the terrifying Father Benitez, played by Bruno Beecher, who's a new character in, this, in the series. The new rep for Omar, who may want to keep his boss behind bars because he's like a religious man and he feels like punishment is, is great. Prison's a really good part of society. Um, the funeral is sad, including a vision of Wyatt and Ruth digging the grave. They're exhausted, but it ends with them laughing. Wyatt could always do that for Ruth, make her laugh, you know, and there's not really that many people that can do that, which is why this death hit so hard for her. What now? I mean, they must re-secure Omar's power in Mexico. Marty suggests that he goes down to get a handle on things and keep the money flowing to the FBI and the Shaws. Marty has to convince the cartel that Omar killed Javi. In this, is this setting up an end game for the series in which Marty Bird is a Mexican drug lord? I think that would be kind of insane in a really cool direction that they could take and possibly a spinoff. Claire Shaw comes to Ruth looking for product and tries to blackmail her with security cam footage from Javi's murder. What a dumb idea. Ruth comes out with a shotgun. Life tip. Don't blackmail someone who just killed in cold blood in front of you. You knew it. What are you doing? However, the exchange does give Ruth an idea. The Snell's whole drug operation is just waiting to be taken over. This is hers now. So as Ruth considers this, Marty heads to Mexico and learns that Omar promised to kill them all. It dawns on him that while he has been conveying every piece of information and stepping his plan to Wendy, she hasn't been doing the same. After all of his risk analysis, is Wendy Bird the one risk he never considered enough? <clears throat> That's crazy. Wendy has never really told him anything about what she's doing. She never does that. I mean, she opened up the other casino. She planned all these crazy money schemes, and she never told Marty once about this, and it's super interesting. 
you know, moving forward, and as we kind of wind down at the end of the series, how that's going to affect some things. Sorry, I just bumped my mic. But, uh, yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. This video is obviously going to be out by, like, 1045. And then I'm going to start working on my NFL recap video. I was going to make an edited video for CJ Stroud, uh, like, tomorrow, but I think I'm going to do that some other week because, again, with school and stuff, there's a lot of weight. I, I feel like I should just kind of take it a little slow with those edited videos, get you guys, like, a banger a week. So that's cool. Short-form sports content every Friday. That's my new thing. I'm out, guys.